at NTV. Welcome back to Morning and NTV and thank you for staying with us. We don't take that lightly. It's a busy schedule and we understand it's a lockdown. The students are back home and you're wondering how best are you going to navigate this lockdown until it ends. Romeo Busiku will be here to get you all the information that you need. You don't need to leave your room to go anywhere. You just need your remote. You just need to pay your yaka and pay for your Go TV, DSTV or whatever you are subscribed to. In this, uh, at this juncture, we're going to be talking about nutrition tips on how to stay healthy. Remember, many health experts have been touting healthy living, eating habits in a bid to boost immunity so that you're out of the coronavirus. Some people contend, the experts ex especially, they contend that some people have contracted the virus, healed because of their immunity, and they did not know or suspect that they had contracted the coronavirus in the first place. So if you have a good immunity, you're in a good place. Dietitians and the BDA have been asked about many questions about nutrition and the dietary issues related to COVID-19 or the coronavirus pandemic. To talk to us about this and more, we have Dr. Chiganda Byron, a wellness expert, and he joins me right now. Very good morning, Mr. Chiganda. Good morning to you. Thank you. So help us understand how best one's nutrition can help them out of the coronavirus and what they should be doing to boost the same and why a weak immunity is actually susceptible to the contraction of a, a coronavirus. Yes, Thank help you. us understand those dynamics. Thank you so much. Now we all know that of course we eat every day. Mm -hmm. and, uh, the food that you eat impacts so much in the way that you, mm -hmm. your body will behave. Mm -hmm. So eating in a certain way will definitely impact so much on mm -hmm. your health. Mm -hmm. And of course when you look at most of the people that have been affected by this virus, mm -hmm. There's a way that they have been compromised in relation to their immune cells. Mm -hmm. And when they have been examined, they have seen that most of these people, their immunity mm -hmm. has been a bit low mm -hmm. than expected. Mm -hmm. So if we actually ate in a certain way, we would actually help to fight off this virus so much. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, the only worry would be is that most people, they are actually they're very vigilant now. And they're trying to eat in a certain way. They're trying to eat different dishes. Mm -hmm. But it would help so much if that most of these people actually gain some time back. Mm -hmm. But of course, that does not remove the fact that most of these viruses will actually be got rid of. Mm -hmm. I'll start by saying that uh, our bodies, uh, foods rich in about vitamins mm -hmm. and minerals, for example, vitamin A, mm -hmm. B, C, D, and E. Mm -hmm. And then also minerals like zinc and selenium mm -hmm. and folate. And vitamin B6. Yes, vitamin B6, mm -hmm. B9, and then B12 mm -hmm. are actually very essential to actually help fight off your immunity. Mm -hmm. uh, then vitamin D. Now, the, the controversy here is that uh, because we are encouraging people to self-isolate mm. and we know that some immune cells actually require vitamin D to function mm. very well. Exposure to the sun. Yes, mm. exposure to the sun. And now here we're telling people to self-isolate. Mm. And what I want to encourage people is that actually the vitamin that you need, you actually don't need to spend in the sun mm. a lot of time. Mm -hmm. You need about 5 to 15 minutes mm -hmm. about uh, in the morning between 11 and midday. Mm -hmm. So you could actually expose yourself, get that benefit of the vitamin, and then you can go inside mm -hmm. as well. So vitamin D essentially plays a lot in uh, immunity mm. to help to boost your body cells. Now looking at uh, uh, vitamins, for example, vitamin C. Mm. Foods are rich in vitamin C, for example, oranges, uh, broccoli, kale, and, uh, and uh, spinach. Mm. Because we know that uh, when you get uh, infections, your body undergoes what we call oxidative stress, which means that there are a lot of uh, free radicals or cells that are likely to damage your cells. So if you have a lot of vitamin C circulating within mm. your body, mm. chances are very high that it's going to destroy some of these cells. Mm. And then oranges are some of the things that we're encouraging people to eat mm. in number of these days. And I'm not surprised that on the market, mm. people actually to buy as much as oranges mm -hmm. as they want. Uh, the, only the, 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 the only problem here is that uh, because vi uh, oranges are also linked to a number of gut issues because some people take too much. They actually take lemons mm. and then they are, they're susceptible to get ulcers. What, what, what is the science behind uh, uh, consuming oranges in that regard? Is it the citric acid entering your body and uh, burning those, that virus in your intestines? What is the science there? Now, the science behind is that uh, these lemons, of course, contain vitamin yeah. C. And, and the vitamin C helps to destroy cells mm -hmm. and th some of those cells that are uh, uh, antibodies mm -hmm. uh, anti that are likely to uh, affect your, mm -hmm. your, your body mm -hmm. so it actually bind uh, uh, around them and then we destroy them and then mm -hmm. it can be eroded out okay. of your body so what are some of those foods where we can find vitamin c where we can find b6 you've already hinted on oranges b6 b12 and vitamin b a and b now, with vitamin A, vitamin A is so much in abundant in uh, dark green leafy vegetables, mm -hmm. uh, especially broccoli, looking at uh, spinach, 
uh, and curl. And we are so embraced here that in Uganda that we actually have all of these available. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, sometimes if you, vitamin A, if you eat, uh, because vitamin, these uh, vegetables are rich in beta carotene, mm -hmm. and body hair can help to synthesize uh, vitamin, C, vitamin A from beta carotene. Mm -hmm. So if you actually ate a lot of dark leafy greens, mm -hmm. uh, broccoli, and then spinach, will actually give you an exposure to vitamin A. Mm -hmm. And then vitamin B9, and then vitamin B12, and then vitamin B6, they're common in legumes. Uh, and also healthy fats, especially uh, egg yolks, mm -hmm. uh, legumes, chia seeds, uh, pumpkin seeds. They are also quite very good in terms of... So someone like me who takes raw eggs, I'm in a better position to ward off the coronavirus. Yes, uh, I should say, but the problem with, the <laughs> <laughs> with raw eggs, I had a friend yeah. who has been on a raw egg diet yeah. for about four, four, four days. The problem is that that tends to expose you to a number of also other health issues. Mm. But of course, you yeah, also look at the risk benefit. W what are the complications there? I want to know. Now, because uh, egg yolks have been linked to salmonella, especially mm. fertilized eggs, because yeah. we buy eggs randomly, so you may likely to get salmonella and mm. and, and the kind of. So we want to look at also the aspect mm. <laughs> of that. But of course, like I've said, the risk benefit. Sometimes the benefit outweighs so much the risk. Mm. So I should say it is. So quite what are important. the benefits now? So the benefits would be that it also it would help your body to remove excess toxins. True. Because the eggs will actually help your bowels to move very well. Mm. And eliminating toxins within your body is also another way to help you to actually essentially mm -hmm. remove some of these toxins that mm -hmm. you, we want to get out. Amazing. What are the other foods? So the other foods are legumes. Uh, we are encouraging people to stock as much uh, legumes as possible. Mm -hmm. And we are looking at things like beans. Mm -hmm. uh, we are looking at peas. Uh, we are looking at lentils. And the good thing that these can actually stay on the shelf for a very long time as compared to other sources like uh, groundnuts. So beans are actually essentially quite very good for you to actually eat. So legumes, we are talking about foods with two cotyledons. Yes, exactly. Okay. Excellent. So we, we want to people to stock as much of those to essentially be able to have mm. a very good immunity. Mm. And then also fruits. I want to emphasize people to, to study, to, to store a lot of the apples. And then also we are looking at uh, grapes. We are also looking at uh, purples. Mm. We are also looking at grapes and all different kinds of fruits. Mm. All fruits are essentially very healthy. And the different colors, the more benefits that you're likely mm -hmm. to get. Mm -hmm. So this gives your body more immunity and gives your body more uh, capacity to actually counteract any infections or any viruses mm -hmm. like we have now. Mm -hmm. You've heard it from Dr. Uh, uh, Dr. Chigana Byron right there and a wellness expert. Those are some of the fruits you can actually consume and ward off the coronavirus just in case you've been hit. I'm actually enjoying this conversation because I've been taking raw eggs for the past five years. And it tells me... There is a linkage to salmonella, but we have been fine for the longest time. But then he also says that there are some more benefits uh, to taking raw eggs in that regard. But then, in other countries, we've been noticing that uh, many people have been actually resorting to other, you know, medicines like garlic. Some people have been touting the use of garlic, but we've gotten to know that uh, garlic does not work. Achigana is going to weigh in on that one. Some people are also dousing themselves with chlorine uh, to, do to do away with the coronavirus. Others are actually drinking bleach. Bleach. I hear if you drink bleach, it will actually destroy uh, the coronavirus in your body. All those are actually hoaxes. Please. Mr. D uh, Chigana, help us expound on these myths. What are the other myths around the coronavirus that aren't true? Now, of course, there's a lot of information that is saturating uh, on, on the media and social media. And mm. sometimes I actually see herbal concoctions that are coming on WhatsApp and I ask myself, where mm. is this coming from? Mm. And of course, many friends and colleagues and some of my patients mm. keep sending me this information. Mm. All I have to say is that, first of all, we shouldn't really panic. That's the most important thing. The thing is under control. The government is trying its best uh, to actually calm down this virus. So eating in a certain way, uh, people are desperate. People are trying to do a number of things. About garlic, what I should say is that, of course, garlic is a healthy food. It has anthocyanins, which are very good, mm. good antioxidants, which can help to get rid of a uh, number of... Uh, but it won't actually solve the problem immediately. Mm. But what we believe is that if you actually mix the garlic, for example, I'm going to give you a concoction, mm. uh, which I believe that can actually help to boost your immunity. Amazing. Go ahead. Yes. Mm. Uh, uh, turmeric is a very, very good... Uh, uh, turmeric, if you can use the uh, turmeric powder, about uh, half a teaspoon of turmeric, mm. And then you can uh, get uh, uh, two tablespoons of cinnamon. Mm -hmm. And then you use about one tablespoon of honey as well. Mm -hmm. And then you can put some pinch of sea salt or the Himalayan salt. Mm -hmm. And then place in warm water with mint leaves to leave to stay for about 15 to 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. And you drink that every day will actually give your body a very strong, a very strong herbal concoction mm -hmm. very that will help to boost your immunity mm -hmm. that you can always drink every morning. Mm -hmm. So garlic is not really going to solve the problem immediately, I should say, and mm -hmm. it's, it, it's just going to boost your immunity, mm -hmm. but it's not actually going to get rid of the virus. Mm -hmm. And let's try to 
avoid some of these that are actually coming up. Besides these foods, is there another way people can actually boost their immunity to be able to ward off the coronavirus? Yes, uh, one of them is that want people to exercise much as they are staying in indoors. Mm. When you exercise, you increase the oxygen delivery to cells, mm. and if cells are, are getting more oxygen uh, per minute, it means that they have capability to actually get rid of anything. Mm. So exercising helps to increase oxygen, de de uh, oxygen delivery to cells. So we want people to do some simple stretches at home. And I'm happy that the kids at home, so actually the whole family can actually be involved. You can download some uh, home workouts on your phone. Mm. Or you can make use of your phone, do some simple stretches. You can skip a rope. So you can actually do that also build your, your, your immune system as well. Mm. And also we are encouraging people to take some uh, supplements that mm. are actually very good uh, mm. in boosting immunity. We are looking at zinc and mm. uh, omega-3 fatty acids as well. If you have access to, to them, visit your practitioner, discuss with them, and then you can prioritize which one. Well, well right here at Morning at NTV, every morning we have a segment Fit in Five where we encourage a viewer to actually uh, dare to a uh, workout routine at least five days a week. I don't know whether or not our people have been adhering to, but uh, yes, we've been doing that. But then there's this issue, if there's a lockdown, how can they work out from their houses? Uh, yes, that's a tricky question. Now, mm. most of the people, uh, of course... Uh, they, they have simple compounds. Mm. Of course, it's a lockdown. Mm. You can actually move out briefly in the house for 30 minutes or 45 minutes. If mm. you have a big compound, you can actually move out and stretch a bit. Mm. You can do some exercises. You can do sit-ups actually mm. in the home. You mm. can do push-ups. You can do crunches because you don't require a lot of space area. Mm. About two to, two, to about two to three meters mm. is enough actually for two people. Mm. So you can actually do some exercises even when you're indoors. Mm. So help, it help the people understand why it's very, very uh, dangerous right now to go to the gym. Now, of course, wha w one of the things that we are trying to avoid is the gym because there's a lot of uh, contact, a lot of uh, number of people coming in, and there are different machines that are people that are using. So there's a lot of contact on different machines. Mm -hmm. You go to the bathroom, you're using a towel. So the one of the things that you want to avoid in the spreading of this corona is to avoid contact. Mm -hmm. So when you look at the gym itself, the equipment itself, people tend to do so many things at the same time. There are so many individuals, so we are trying to really to see that you avoid that kind of contact that mm -hmm. is likely to happen. Mm -hmm. Yes, Dr. Byron Chiganda, a wellness expert, what can people do in this interim besides the workouts, besides the, uh, uh, the okay. supplements, besides everything that you've touted? What else can they do to protect themselves in this interim? Now, uh, first of all, like the Minister of Health has said, that we're encouraging people to stay indoors, which is quite very important. Mm -hmm. To have self-isolation or self-quarantine is quite very important. I have mm -hmm. issues with it is that some people are self-isolated, but in the same house, you have some people that keep moving out and in. Mm. So we want to really be to make this self-isolation very thorough. If you're a family of five, and then maybe the father keeps going, moving out and in, mm. that's not actually self-isolation. Mm. So if you actually keep moving, you're putting these other four at risk who are staying indoors. Mm. So let's try to maintain to the maximum. Uh, let's try to avoid direct contact. Uh, w w shaking hands and even using the elbows, you have tried to avoid it mm. as well. Mm. Let us wave with dry hands, actually, with mm. dry hands. Because some people, after washing their hands, they're wet, then they're waving to each other. Mm. And one of the ways this virus can be transmitted is through fruits. Mm. So we actually want to also avoid that kind of contact mm. that is likely to, 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 to really happen. Mm. And of course, uh, people who are using uh, border borders, people who are using uh, to move out, encourage them to cover their eyes as well. Because we are saying that this virus can actually, so it's airborne, mm. it can stay for 15 minutes mm. in circulation. Mm. So you want to cover your eyes if you're on a bike or if you're moving it freely in the air to help you counteract mm. some of the, of the risks. As We've well. also gotten some advice from experts who contend that uh, if you actually contract the coronavirus in the first two days and uh, treat the symptoms, that you can actually recover. Yes, that is very, very true. Now, the body naturally can get rid of any bacteria mm. or any viral infections, depending on the level of your immunity. Mm. And that's why we are talking so much about body boosting immunity mm. uh, foods. Because if your immune system is quite very good mm. and you're not immunocompromised, you actually can fight off these uh, viruses. Mm. And I want to encourage the, the, the elderly. Why we are seeing many people dying in mm. Italy? Because Italy has a life expectancy which is quite high. Mm. So many of these older people are vulnerable group, which means that they can actually really uh, die of for if they contract a virus. So if you ate in a certain way, your immune system is actually a bit more stronger. Mm. Yes. Mm. 
Uh, Dr. Byron Chiganda, right there, we are talking about the coronavirus and how best you can prevent the contraction of the COVID-19 in this uh, in this regard. Uh, like I told you earlier, 422,000 people, more than 422,000 people have actually contracted the disease and 18,000 of those have died. Thank you very much, Byron Chiganda, for You're having the time to speak to us. Thank you so much. At this juncture, I would like to link to my reporter, Stephen Mbidday, for another, another report. A very good morning, my brother. What's the latest where you are? 